Good morning everyone, my name is Audrey. I am Stitchy Witch 42 here on FlossTube and over on Instagram. This is my channel about life, the universe, and everything. Last night when I went to bed, I stopped in the bathroom and I brushed my teeth. And as I'm doing that, you know, I kind of looked up in the mirror at myself and I've got the lights on either side of the mirror that are reflecting down on me. And I'm like, wow, there's a lot of gray in my hair. I don't really notice it a lot, and I think that's because I'm of a blondish persuasion. Sometimes when I'm driving in the car, especially if I have the sunroof open, I will see the reflection in the rearview mirror and I can see the gray there. But daily looking at myself, I don't really see it. And then last night I saw it and I was just like, wow, there's a lot, <laughs> a lot of gray in there. That's okay. I don't mind. It's just, it became more obvious yesterday. I got a text from my daughter, oh, about a week ago. She said that she had found her first gray hair. And I kind of laughed at that because my daughter dyes her hair. Her hair color would be the same as mine and she doesn't want to be a blonde so she's more auburn. And she said she found a gray hair and she showed me, she sent me a picture of it. And I sat back and, th and I thought about it and I laughed and I said, well, you know, the timing's just about right because you told me, speaking to my daughter, that you saw gray in my hair when you were 16. Her daughters are 16 and 17, so the timing is just about right. She said she's going to embrace it. Okay. Have that one gray hair. We also send messages back and forth about the random facial hairs that those are just so bizarre. They're not there and then the next day they're a foot long. Go check yourself in the mirrors, lady. Look for the chin hairs. Pluck them if necessary. Don't mind the gray. It's all good. But when I was standing there brushing my teeth and looking in the mirror and seeing the gray hair and thinking about that, for some reason I had a flashback to the Golden Girls. Do you remember the Golden Girls? I loved that show. I loved that show so much. All of the characters were fantastic. But I learned something from Dorothy and I... <laughs> it, it still haunts me to this day. I don't remember what the episode was. All I remember is her saying that when women get to a certain age, they should not look at themselves face downwards in a mirror. Okay, somebody plants that information inside your brain, inside my brain, and I have to go find out what it means. And, oh my God, don't do that. It's bad. It's bad. Just, whew, it's bad. Don't do it. But if you do, you know, you have to tell me down below because I need to know these things. <laughs> I need to know these things. So, welcome to my world. <laughs> Okay, since we last visited, I got the chance to go up to Acorns and Threads last Thursday, first Thursday stitch group. I also got to meet a lovely lady there who watches my videos for whatever reason. Okay, it sometimes amazes me that anybody watches my videos, but then I realize that the crazy in me appeals to the crazy in you, and I respect that. <laughs> this lady, her name is Kimberly, 
she said that she and her husband were traveling around the United States. They're both retired. And they were going to be in Oregon. And would I be interested in meeting up with her at Acorns and Threads? And I said, sure. I'll be there first Thursday. I'm there almost every first Thursday. <clears throat> so she came. We met up. She is a very, very nice lady. And she brought me a gift. Now, if you want to meet up with me, if you want to know me, you don't have to give me gifts, but I'm going to take them. Because <laughs> who wouldn't? She made this gorgeous project bag. Absolutely love it. It's got skulls all over it. But then I opened it up. And it's a three-dimensional skull. It's all puffy. You can put needles in it. It could be your pokey tool. Inside here were some other things. There were these two little clothespins that had been covered with paper. I don't know whether she did that or not. I didn't ask. But I like them. I will use them. I will find a use for them. There was a little plastic baggie in here with um, three different colors of dinky dye threads. So those are pretty. But then she also gave me a stitch piece. This is one of the patterns from this year's Just Cross Stitch Halloween special. It's actually one that I was thinking of stitching myself. Now I don't have to. So thank you, Kimberly. I enjoyed meeting you. I enjoyed... I really want to know what she thought of that day because there was a lot of laughter going on and um, I had to remind people of my trip going to the Arctic Circle next year with Mark and the black bears and grizzly bears and polar bears and Mark and Philip are going on an 11, nine day trip the 18th of this month, they're going over to a Jeep show in Pocatello, Idaho. So they're going to spend nine days testing out the camp worthiness of, of our Willie Jeep. And yeah. He's going to be gone. I'm going to have a clean house. It's going to be amazing because I'm going to shove all of his crap that's in the living room in the office. And for nine days I'm going to have a clean house. And then he's going to come home and it's going to look like a tornado hit the inside of my house again. But for nine days my house will be clean. Yeah. Did I say that nicely? <laughs> I don't know. I love my husband. I do. I love my husband. But I don't like his mess. His mess isn't as cool as my mess. My mess is cooler because it's my mess. Just leaving that there. Okay. The other thing that I did up at Acorns and Threads is I picked up the Mill Hill beads that I needed so that I could finish the trim on this little pillow. So it is now completely and fully FFO'd. And I think that's it for first Thursday. Yeah. I have another start and finish since my last video. This was also a project out of the Just Cross Stitch Halloween special. This is Witch's Apron. So this is what it looks like all finished and I made some changes to it. So when I I liked this one because it was on perforated paper and I just thought it's a really cute little pattern. But I, I kind of messed up right away. So then I just went with my mess up and figured what the heck I'm gonna do what I want to do with this pattern. So, I think there's like, there's supposed to be 10 colors 
in this pattern, I ended up using one, two, three, four, five, five colors, and one of them was not called for at all. So if you look at this piece, and you see that green up on the top, that green up on the top was supposed to be the green that was used inside the cauldron. The color that was supposed to be the top of the apron is the green I used down below. Of course, having cross-stitch now for, oh, maybe 45 years, and knowing how to read cross-stitch patterns, and knowing that this symbol goes with this color, I used the wrong color up here. And I ran out of it. And I had about that much of it done. So I went down to the store and I bought another skein of it. This top color is DMC 581 if any, anybody's interested. And the bottom is 165. And when I came back and I was stitching down here and I was getting to the cauldron, I went to pull the colors for the inside of the, the bubbles inside, the potion inside the cauldron. And realized that, hmm, hmm, I used the wrong color. Because this was supposed to be this, and this was supposed to be inside the cauldron. Well, it's on perforated paper, and I was not going to unpick it, so I decided to go ahead and leave it as is. The other thing that I saw on the pattern is right there between where the two colors differentiate. It's a straight line, and the bottom color here was supposed to be a brown. One, I didn't like the brown. Two, I didn't like the straight line. So I kind of made it a little checkerboard between two rows and I like the way that looks and I think it blends much better. And then with the brooms, I went ahead and made little loops around the bristles of them and I think that was just a little added detail that made this look really cute. So in the pattern, it says that you're supposed to put it on felt on the back of it. And unlike a Mill Hill kit where you cut the next row over around your design, this one says to cut two rows away. So I did that around most of it. I had a little problems around the curves here. But when I got that done, I took a piece of paper and I traced the size of my perforated paper, folded that in half, cut it out so that I had a pattern for the felt that I put on the back of it, and all I did was do an outline around the whole piece, and that outline is what holds the felt onto the back of the apron, of course with the ribbons for tying it. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that Thing wanted to do a runway walk with his new apron on it. So if you want to see those photos, go over to Instagram. I know from some previous videos that some of you don't have Instagram, so I will include those photos of Thing doing his runway walk in his new apron at the end of my video. Make a note. Runway walk. All right. I got my projects done for the Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit. Really proud of myself for getting them done. I'm really happy with how they turned out. And I have to tell you about the last five or six of them. It was like, why am I doing this? Why am I sewing? What made me do this? And I know I have only myself to blame. I really don't like sewing. <laughs> really don't. I don't. Which brings up an upcoming weekend. 
Um, a while back, Cheryl, one half of Stitching with the Sisterlies, contacted Anna and I. Anna is Stitch Roadies, Quilt Roadies, and asked us if we wanted to go with her to visit her sister Colleen, the other half of Stitching with the Sisterlies. Her brother-in-law is coming to town and she was going to go up there for a couple of days and did we want to come along? And so we are. And then I watched Colleen and Cheryl's live stream on Stitching with the Sisterlies. And Colleen seems to think that she will get me into quilting. No. 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 In fact, I'm kind of worried about going on this trip now because granted, I am going voluntarily, but for a couple of days I will be in a hostage situation. And no. <laughs> Just no. No. I love those ladies dearly, but no. My friend Lori goes, maybe it's not the type of quilts you're working on. I'm not working on any quilts. Maybe it's not that type. And she goes, but you do your art journals and, and maybe we need to get you an artsy quilt. No. No, you don't. This girl is fine not being a quilter. I'm at peace with that. Accept it. Right. Okay, so let's talk about paper crafting for a moment. Well, it's going to be longer than a moment. Back when I first started making videos, my very first video, I had a project that I was sharing. It was a Witch's Magical Book of Brews and Potion. And I think it was my fifth video that I showed it after Mark had put it on a book cover for me. I had gone to Michael's. I had found a 8.5 by 11 size-ish art journal. It was on sale for 5 bucks at the time. Now I'm sure I couldn't find anything like that at that price. But it fit my piece of fabric. And Mark put the cover on it for me. And what I'm talking about is this project here. This is the front cover of my Witch's Book of Magical Brews and Potions. This is the spine. And this is the back of it. When I got this done, I was using this book to put my happy mail in. Any cards or letters, postcards, things like that, I was putting them in there and making this into a journal of sorts. Well, I hadn't even gotten halfway through the book, and it was so thick that, I mean, it was this wide instead of this wide. I have a, it's one of those stands that you use to hold a cooking book open so that you can read the recipes while you're cooking. And I'd had this journal sitting in there. But the thing of it is, is because it was so thick and that thing is metal and it was tight, the front cover got warped. And I kind of hated the fact that I couldn't add anything to it and there was at least half of the pages not used and it's kind of been poking me in the back of my head for quite some time and I finally decided that I was going to redo it and I have to tell you that was pretty scary because what I did is I went and grabbed this and I cut the inside out So that's what the whole thing looks like, opened up. So then I have this cut out and I'm trying to figure out 
how am I going to put the pages back into it? How am I going to make the signatures? Well, I took all the pages that were left over and I very carefully pulled them out. So these are the original pages. I took them downstairs and I put them in a coffee bath overnight so that they would get good and saturated. And then the next morning, it was one of those day, days that we had um, an excessive heat warning here. And I think by 8 o'clock in the morning, it was already 80 degrees. Excuse me, I had to burp. Anyway, I took the pages outside, dumped most of the coffee out of this, this thing. I took the pages outside and I spread them out all across my grass. And the majority of them took less than a half an hour to be completely dry. And what I ended up with with pages that look like this. Now, some of them are very muted in color. Some of them you see a little differentiation there. Some of them you get color like this. I had been watching Barbara at 49 Dragonflies and she was working on an extra extra large journal and she was using paper tape to put her pages together. So I went onto Amazon and I found paper tape and when I got it I used it to put two of the original pieces of paper from that journal together where to the point where I have four signatures with four sets of paper. So these are what is going to go back into my journal. Now I started playing around with it and measuring it because that's one of the things that you have to do. Let's see if I can do this. Putting them back in there, I have to look at how much space I have here and how thick this already makes this journal. And I'm thinking I'm going to take one set of papers out of each of my signatures, so it'll be four signatures with three sets of paper in there. And then I have to sew it in to a new spine. This is the inside of the book. If you've ever watched any journaling videos, what I'm going to be doing is called a hidden spine. So I have a piece of cardboard that will fit this section right here. And I'm going to put it on the back of a piece of fabric, which will eventually cover both these pages and hold it in. The fabric that I have chosen to use is actually a Teresa Kogut fabric. And it's rather hard to see, but this pattern has, oh, it has several witches' houses, and it has pumpkins, and it has words, and it has potion bottles, and it's perfect. So what I need to do, I have the spine upstairs. I need to figure out where the spine goes on this fabric, glue it on the back side of the fabric, so that when I put it in the book, this is what I will see. But I will glue that spine in there. I will sew my signatures onto that. And then I'm going to have Mark help me again with the carpet tape, the same as he did the cover of this book. And I'm going to have a new journal that I can use. I will show it again when it's done. But after that, I probably won't because this will be a personal journal for me to use. But it's a project that I'm working on. And it's kind of sort of cross, well it is cross stitch. And paper crafting. Together. Alright. Would you like to see my Alphonse Mucha? I have been working on her. Um, I had given myself a goal earlier in the year that I would really, really like to get her done. She is my fourth Alphonse Mucha. I've talked about them many times on my channel. 
the first one I stitched, I stitched for my daughter Erin. Um, the one that told me that she now has a gray hair. A gray hair. Whatever. There will be more. When I stitched hers, I was a monogamous stitcher, and it took me about 13 months to stitch. And then I stitched one for myself, and I was still a monogamous stitcher, and that one took me 11 months to stitch. Both of those were done before I started making videos, because the next one I did took me two years. And then I started this one, and it's going on four years. I blame you. Just saying. I used to be monogamous. I started making videos. I am no longer monogamous. I blame you. So, I have been taking my Alphonse Mucha up to Acorns and Threads with me when I go up to First Thursday or the Biscornu Day or the Whip Wednesday or whatever days that I end up going up there. Being newly retired... Oh, oh, I have a story. It, it kind of poked itself in there. I'm a witch. <laughs> yeah. A couple weeks ago, I had a dream about work. And I tell you, when I was working at the store, at every store that I worked at, I would have these bizarre, so bizarre dreams of weird things that would happen in, in the store, and it was just, you know, when I retired, I thought, I'm done with those. No, no, I'm not. Week, week and a half ago, I woke up from having a dream that I was at my store, my last store. There is this huge safe in that room. Huge safe. It's got an upper safe, it has a lower safe, and inside the lower safe there's a further one that's back underneath that was the bane of my existence. In my dream, I'm there and there's a new safe, which is inside the bottom, under the one that was the bane of my existence. And the only way for me to get to it is to lay on my stomach and reach in and use the pin pad to open it up. Everybody had their own number. And I couldn't remember my number. My former lead bookkeeper was there. My store director was there. It was busy as crazy. I kept asking for their help. They were busy, they were busy, they were busy. And finally my store director came in and she wouldn't give me my PIN number, and I'm laying on the floor, and finally I just looked at her and I said, nope, I can't do this anymore, I quit. And I woke up. When I woke up, I grabbed my cell phone to see what time it is, because I don't have an alarm clock next to my bed. And I saw that my lead bookkeeper would be at the store at that time. So I sent her a text message with this story. And she replied back that the store is haunting me because I haven't been in to visit her enough. Okay. Yesterday. True story. Yesterday, I decided to go to the store because I have bottles and cans that I need to return and I wanted to go visit because I was chastised. I haven't been visiting enough. Okay. And as I am walking through the door into the store, my phone buzzes. So I grab it and I look at it and it is a text message from my former lead bookkeeper and she goes, your dream is coming true. We got a new safe. So I'm walking around the front of the store. I go behind customer service. I have my phone in my hand and the door to the office I worked in opens up. My lead is there and one of my co-workers is there. They're both laughing. My coworker goes, speak of the devil. And she goes, I just sent you a picture of the new safe. And sure enough, I look down and I see the picture on my cell phone. Plus, I'm looking through the door and I see the new safe there. It has a safe that's floor level. And it has pin pads. I dreamt about it a week and a half ago.
I am so glad that I am no longer there. Okay. Alphonse Mucha. <laughs> Sorry. If you've been to my channel before, you know this happens. <laughs> yeah. My Alphonse Mucha. I've been working on her for four years now. And I'm really, really trying to get her done. So I've been taking her up to Acorns and Threads, and I've been working with her there. And between my bat projects and my other project that I have down here to show you, I've been working on her. And I got page 24 done the other day. This pattern is 28 pages, so that means I am down to the last row, the last four pages. It's getting there. A couple of months ago, when I was moving it in my frame and I realized that my fabric is too short. And all sorts of words were said that day. And I decided that for myself, the way I needed to do this is I needed to add another piece of Ada behind it. I'm stitching her on 14 count Ada because the finished size will then be 27 and a half inches long by 10 and 3 quarter inches wide, which is the same size as the one that I have. It's the same size as the other three that I've done. So I shared it on my videos that I had taken an extra piece of Ada and I had very carefully sewn the two pieces together trying to line up the holes in the Ada. <coughs> Saturday, I decided, Saturday was when I finished the last of page 24. So I was able to take her scroll up, have her where I can work on the last of it, and I decided that I wanted to go down the one side to hit the bottom left corner, which I did reach. When I turn the camera around and show it to you, what you're going to see is that the bottom of it looks like a mess. That's because you can see the bottom of the original piece of Ada, and you can see that I've added another piece behind it. I think there is five, six, there will be seven stitch, seven rows of stitches across the bottom of it that will be through the two layers of fabric. There's still like five rows of stitches on the bottom of the original Ada, but I added this extra fabric so that when I take it to Molly, she'll be able to pin and lace it and have that extra fabric to pull around the back and all that kind of stuff. In other words, would you like to see where I'm at with my Alphonse Mocha? Hold on, I'm going to swivel the camera around. So right here is the bottom left corner. I am stitching through both this top layer here and this bottom layer here. And as you can see, I had to add a couple of magnetic ties to kind of hold this down tighter because right here where the Ada is coming through the split rod on this, the center part wants to keep sliding out. I was trying to pull it back and it started fraying here so I had to figure out a different way to deal with this and I have a little clamp here just to hold the center of the split rod together. So. This is where she's at. This is, I'm at, I'm at the bottom. Um, I'm close to getting her done. But my plan is now to work all the way around the bottom to get this part where it is through the two layers done first. And then I will do all the fill in. I was so excited to get down there. Um, those last four pages, they're not quite full length. They're almost full length. The page that I'm working on, which is technically page 28, is only a half of a page. 
So I got to my corner. I'm going to work across the bottom through that double layer there. It's not difficult, um, but it does take a little bit of... I'm a little bit slower working in that area, which is why I thought if I went all the way around and got all of the border done, all of those rows of white stitching, which... I know there's a reason for them being there, I just don't know what it is. <laughs> but anyway, I'm getting there. I'm kind of, sort of, in the mindset that I want to work on her monogamously. Again, because I want to get her finished. I would like to get her to the frame shop this year <laughs> while Mark's still working and we have an income. I still haven't gotten anything from my pension. It's been seven months. I called them yesterday to basically find out that it's just sitting on someone's desk up there and they promised me that they would send me money by next Monday and I said, well, I really hope so because you won't want me to call back. Seven months, people. Seven months. I worked in a union store. If I was late on sending them my dues, they would have been all over my case. They'd even threaten my job. But here I am, retired after 38 and a half years, and it's taking them seven months to give me my pension. They'll back pay it. She said I'd have it next Monday. If I don't, I'm not going to be a nice witch. Okay. My other project that I've been working on is my Stitchy Witchy Bell Pull. This is by Stitchy Pros. I am working on 32 Count Mad Hatter's Tea Party from Dames of the Needle. And this is where I'm at. So it's just two colors. It's DMC 310 black and 550 purple. As I've been doing the words, when I finish a word, if I've got extra floss, I've been coming and doing a row on the outside border, which is why all four of the outside borders are different size, different lengths. Um, I just got the broom done, and the words will come in right about the same level there, and then this row here will be flipped, will be reversed right underneath it, and then there's another small border, and then there's a pair of witch's boots. I wish I could wear witch's boots. The arthritis in my right foot has been really, really bothering me here lately. I have an appointment to go see my doctor. I know I probably need to go back and see the orthopedic doctor. I don't like going to doctors. I know. Stop whining about it. Just do it. Alright. I have one more piece. I've saved it for the last. Oh, no. I have some garage sailing stuff to tell you, and then I'll show you my last piece. Hold on. Last Saturday, Mark didn't have to work. So, we decided that we were going to go out for breakfast. And then we were going to go do some garage sales. And we were... There was a small town just east of us called Scotts Mills. And we saw a sign that there was a sale out there. Drove out, found it, met a really nice lady out there who does cross-stitch. On 60 count. But she's like a lot of people our age are. We go to sales, and if we get a good buy on something, we'll buy a whole bunch of it and hoard it for a while and then maybe resell it or whatever. She had a tub full of projects. Some of them were cross-stitch. Most of them were needlepoint. She had found these at a storage sale. 
storage unit sale. But there was one in there that I liked. It's a cross stitch kit. Um, it does not have all of the kit and actually the color guide in here is for anchor floss which is not a big deal because it'll be easy to swap out but it's Big Ben and I was born in England and I've stitched Big Ben before and this isn't a very big pattern at all there is actually the piece of Ada in here that came with the kit and whoever this woman had bought it well, she bought it from a, a sale, but it's been started. I don't know if I will finish it on here. I could. I could. But it's a real simple project, and I just thought, you know, I can do that. Because like everybody who seems to have this big thing for Paris and all that stuff, I'm a London girl. I just am. But then I was going through and I was looking at all the needlepoint um, patterns that she had there. And I saw this one. I had to have it. I've done needlepoint a couple of times. Um, I'm not that comfortable with it. It's just specialty stitches. And you get to decide what kind of stitch you, you want to do for yourself. But I had to have this. I just don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. So if any of you do needlepoint, give me some ideas, please, because I had to have this one. A Christmas store, little leg lamp, fragile. I, I need to do something with this. So if you've done needlepoint, please give me some ideas. It even shows the fish netting on the stocking, and yeah, I need to know how to do that, because I, I need to know how to do that. But the other thing that I found there at this garage sale was a couple of bags that had some laces in it that I thought I could use for my paper crafting. There were some doilies that I thought I could use for some of my paper crafting. And then there was this. This lovely little shaker box. It's about nine inches from side to side, almost six inches from side to side there. Beautiful burl wood on the top. That's what it looks like on the inside. And it is signed. This was signed in 1995. So I'm thinking that I am going to make a little sewing box out of this. I was showing it to, to Mark and he goes, well maybe you can find a cross stitch piece to put on the top of it. No. I am not going to hide this this beautiful burl. It, it, it's just, it's too pretty. It's too pretty. But I could find something that I might be able to stitch and just press fit on the inside. I don't want to glue or add anything to it, but I think a cross stitch piece inside of it would look lovely. I also got this gallon size baggie that said wad of lace three dollars and I came home and as I was watching television that afternoon I unwadded that baggie full of lace and then I rewrapped it on the spool that they have it on and that is all all beautiful lace So, I think I would be able to use a lot of this in my paper crafting, and because it's a simple white color, I will be able to dye it as I need it, but in total I spent $20 and I got all of this, another package of lace, 
five or six doilies, the two patterns, and the box for 20 bucks. So, now it's time for me to show you my last fully finished piece. This is one that I had done and I've shared it with you many times because I absolutely love this piece. Um, when I was in, at Michael's a couple of week, weeks ago, this was the one that I was looking for a frame for. And I took my stitch piece with me and realized that a frame with an 8x10 opening was going to cut off parts of the side and not really show any of the fabric behind the design. So I went and looked at the 11 by 14s and decided that that would work much better. I found a frame that I think it's the perfect frame for this piece because when you look at it from a distance it kind of mimics the fabric, kinda sorta if you look at it sideways out of your eyes and you're not really paying attention. That kind of, kind of, sort of. Um, but I have finished and framed myself, and I'm really, really proud of myself for getting this done, The Haunted Library. So there you are. She is completely, fully finished. I love, love this frame. When I got it, I brought it home, I cut out my piece of foam core and a piece of batting to put behind this. There is no glass on it. And I started pinning it in place and it didn't look quite right to me. So I brought it down and I showed Mark and he goes, it's crooked. And I said, but where is it crooked? And he was looking at the two points here and he goes, this one looks good. And he goes, you need to bring this one up. So I unpinned everything around there except for a couple up at this top corner and one pin that I had stuck straight through here to kind of use as a pivot so I could move this side of the fabric up. And it took me a couple of hours of playing around with it, but I think I've got it centered really well, which was the hardest part. And then I got it all repinned and then I laced the back of it and because I couldn't put the original back back on it I covered it with paper bag from the store so it has all the information on here that this is the Haunted Li Library Lola Crow Designs stitched on 18 count spider web by Rogue Stitching Sunflower Printed Fabrics DMC Stitch dates were the 10th of May through the 2nd of July, 2024. And then I made a note down here. Yes, I used a paper bag on the back. Reuse, recycle, it's what I had. So this is the Haunted Library, fully finished. I also counted this as one of my hashtag 24 bats in 2024 because it's got bats in it. So... Of my hashtag 24 bats in 2024, this was project number 18. I have six more to go. I have a bag down here still full of potential bat projects. I have my just cross stitch upstairs that has a couple more potential bat projects. But I'm kind of conflicted because I want to work on my MUCA. So, do I focus on the MUCA and get it done, and then try to finish my bats in 2024? I don't know. I don't know. I want to get the bat projects done, but I really want my MUCA done. And then I got a big bend that I'd like to stitch. And I have a journal I want to finish. Hmm. Tell me what you think. 
Should I focus on the MUCA and then go back to the bats? Should I start another bat project and then go back to my MUCA? I don't know. I have gray hairs. Lots of them. <sighs> this past weekend, the cross stitch community lost a shining star. If you don't know that, Dalene Wilson, who was so grateful on Flosstube, has left us, and the world has lost a shining star. She was kind and knowledgeable and sweet and just a blessing to know her. So rest well, Dalene. If you've never seen any of her videos, her channel name is So Grateful. Go check them out. Even though she's no longer with us, her videos are still very uplifting. Until we meet again, my friends, bye-bye.